what crime would you need to commit to end up on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list for cyber fugitives? Let's find out. According to the FBI, Mutaba Raza and his accomplice Mosin Raza have been operating a fraudulent online business referred to as Second Eye Solution or Forwarders. The business specializes in production, sales and transfers of false government issued identities and documents which are commonly used by other organizations or individuals performing cyber attacks on the United States and allies. As we go through the top 10, you're likely going to see exactly why a business like this would end up on the top 10 of the FBI's most wanted. The business operates selling passports, driver's license, national identity cards and more from over 200 countries and territories, accepting payment as most illegal operations do now as of 2022 in Bitcoin. The Second Eye business has been used by other criminals that make the list, as well as the Russian organization that targeted the 2016 presidential election, as well as hacker groups that seek to move money despite having been sanctioned by the federal government. The FBI firmly believes that organizations like this help to support a growing threat to global safety. Cybersecurity becomes more and more an issue each day, and companies like Second Eye facilitate other wrongdoers continuing their activities or moving into places to perform what can be devastating attacks on critical infrastructure. Hold on guys, we're getting a phone call from management, must be about today's sponsor. Hello? Yeah, yeah, what is it today? Oh no, no, I've got no real interest in doing that to be honest. How, how much? No, no, how much are they offering? Go back to that part. Uh, okay, uh, all right, okay. Guys, have you heard about the mobile game called Raid Shadow Legends? Raid have just celebrated their third birthday, three years of being a Shadow Legend doing raids. Amazing, who would have thought they would make it three years? Sincerely, congratulations on that. Three years and they've achieved a 4.5 out of 5 rating from 1.7 million total reviews on the Google Play Store. Actually super impressive. Unlike me, the loner that I am, Raid did not celebrate their birthday alone. They've been inviting you to celebrate along with them, giving everyone free gifts, as well as adding a bunch of new content and events to run alongside this. New champions, new artifact sets to help you battle through the hordes of enemies, and of course, much, much more. If you know anything about me, I'm, I'm a big fan of the waifus, and if I had to pick a top three that I would collect in Raid, it would be Vizix, the Unbowed from the Dark Elves, Sachi from the Shadowkin, and Valkyrie from the Barbarians. I don't really think I need to explain my reasoning, right? There's never been a better time to be a Shadow Legend that participates in raids. If you want to get involved, press the link in the video description or scan the QR code on screen and you will get a free starter pack worth almost 40 whole dollars. I mean, guys, we're talking three free champions at once. Misericord, Tiger Soul, and Romero plus 10 of each of these potions. We're just going absolutely crazy. Nobody can stop this man. To collect your rewards, click the link in the video description, go in game, click this button, and you can get started right away. And thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. Next, we have an organization known as APT40. APT40 have a host of other nicknames, as is commonly the case with similar hacker organizations or groups as they take credit for attacks over time or different security services give them nicknames. APT40 has targeted governmental organizations, companies and universities across the United States, Canada, Europe, the Middle East, and specifically in Southeast Asia. The US government consider APT40 to have very close ties to another cyber espionage group known as Hafnium, and many believe both these groups to be advanced persistent threats with ties to the Chinese government. For reference, an advanced persistent threat is defined as a stealthy threat actor, typically a nation state or state sponsored group, which attempt to gain unauthorized access to computer networks and remain undetected for extended periods of time, usually for political or economic motivations. APT40 specifically appear to exist with a focus on stealing technology to bolster the Chinese naval advancement and their ambition to establish a blue water navy. They also engage in regional targeting against traditional intelligence targets, especially organizations that have connections to elections in Southeast Asia. 
APT-40 is believed to have been active since at least 2009, and the US Department of Justice unsealed an indictment against four members of the organization on July 19th, 2021. They allegedly operate behind a front company and have carried out computer network exploitation, which includes theft of trade secrets, intellectual property, and other high value information from multiple companies and organizations from many, many different fields. Yevgeny Ivgorovich Polanyan, a Russian citizen who is referred to as a super hacker, is wanted for his alleged involvement in some of the most prolific ransomware attacks from an individual entity in recent years. Yevgeny was responsible for over 3,000 attacks throughout Texas in 2019, including against law enforcement agencies, municipalities, and other entities. Yevgeny is considered such a nuisance that the FBI are offering up to $5 million for information leading to his arrest. Yevgeny used ransomware called Sodanokibi and Revil to encrypt the files of those infected, leaving behind a website to visit to attempt to regain access. When visiting the website, it outlined demands of payment in cryptocurrency, and if paid, Yevgeny would unlock the user's files. If the ransom was not paid, he would sell the files and data to third parties, making his money any way he could. He attempted to ransom over $13 million in just 2019 alone that can be connected back to him, $6.1 million of which has since been recovered by federal agents. Yevgeny has been indicted for conspiracy to commit fraud, substantive counts of intentional damage to protected computers, and conspiracy to commit money laundering, and if captured by US forces or allies willing to extradite, would face substantial jail time. However, he is allegedly residing in a luxury $380,000 home in Siberia with a gated community and CCTV, where no one seems to care about the fact he's a very wanted man on the other side of the world. Now forgive me as I continue to butcher names from across the world. Number seven is Syed Mohammed Hussein Musa Kazemi and Sahad Kashin come as a package deal referred to as Iranian interference in the 2020 election. Specifically, these two men are wanted for computer intrusion, voter intimidation, and interstate threat offenses in a multifaceted campaign aimed at influencing and interfering in the 2020 US presidential election. These two allegedly obtained voter information from at least one election website and then used said information to contact and threaten voters. They also crafted and disseminated disinformation pertaining to the election and specifically election security while accessing computer systems of several United States media entities and states. Two weeks prior to the election, the pair allegedly on contract of the Iranian government crafted tens of thousands of emails posing as the Proud Boys, threatening to come after Democrats if they were to vote against Trump, essentially telling them, vote for Trump or we'll come and get you. This was part of a wide campaign that lasted months, attempting to undermine the democratic process and stoke tensions with constant posting of falsified information regarding voter manipulation by the Democrats, essentially attempting to play both sides against each other while just spreading as many false narratives as they possibly could. They would post fake videos of hacking showing that the Democrats were trying to steal the vote, and this led to the US government attempting to tell people this was complete disinformation while offering a $10 million reward for any info that leads to the arrest of these two individuals. Although, as with many on this list, they have to recognize the unlikelihood of gaining access to the fugitives while ever they remain in Iran. Igor Dukothachuk, also known as Flora B, born April 14th, 1998, is wanted for running a cyber criminal marketplace that sold thousands of login credentials personally verifiable information and authorization tools that allowed transnational organized crime and other cyber criminals to unlawfully access the online accounts of victims around the globe. Since 2018, this marketplace dubbed Marketplace A by US DOJ officials operated like Amazon, but for fraud, even going as far as selling bundle deals, buy access to two different people's bank accounts to steal from and get some free credit card information. Igor priced the accounts based on the balance available. The more you spend, the more money you could fraudulently access. Marketplace A sold access to more than 48,000 email accounts, 
39,000 other online accounts and had over 5,000 visitors each day. The FBI became aware of the marketplace in March of 2021, despite it having been in operation since May 2018, and set up a covert operation to infiltrate the business. An FBI employee was able to buy 13 items from the marketplace, each containing information for up to 20 accounts, totaling 131 different accounts, which were sent via Telegram or web page links. Igor has been indicted on charges of wire fraud, access device fraud, and aggravated identity theft. He will face up to 20 years in prison, but since he likely resides in Russia, he's very unlikely to be caught. Despite all of the evidence gathered against Igor, one of the most damning indictments comes from the dailymail.co.uk comment section, where a random commenter states, quote, you can tell right off that this kid is a criminal. Look at the long hair. Marat Valerovich Tyukov, Mikhail Mikhailovich Gavrilov, and Pavel Alexandrovich Akulov are the named members of SFB that take up spots 5, 4, 3, and 2 as a combined group on the FBI's most wanted cybercrime list. The Department of Justice unsealed indictments against the three Russians that are alleged to be at the heart of a long-running and persistent campaign to target and infiltrate critical infrastructure worldwide, but with a larger focus specifically on the United States. The US intelligence community refers to this group by several codenames, including Dragonfly, Berserk Bear, Energetic Bear, and Crouching Yeti. But officially, they are part of an entity called Center 16 in the Russian Federal Security Service, FSB. FSB being the organization that rose from the ashes of the more well-known KGB that operated in the Soviet Union era. As for their crime, the alleged operation occurred in two phases. The first involving mass deployment of malware, referred to as Havex, which infected a significant number of organizations in the energy sector indiscriminately. The goal seemingly to gain as much access as possible, and they managed to get Havex malware on over 17,000 devices in the industry, and even managing to compromise a manufacturer that provided parts, as well as software updates, to some of the crucial systems like safety mechanisms for energy production facilities, which is of course extremely, extremely dangerous. Their plot was exposed in 2014, and so they stopped using Havex as their malware attack. Instead, electing to escalate to phase two, targeting of specific facilities and engineers who may have access to said facilities. They specifically targeted a nuclear power plant in Kansas. According to an FBI agent who investigated the case, the plan appeared to be maintaining access and waiting. This would allow for them at a later date to use said access to affect or damage the energy grid or other critical operations within the United States. This attack was said to be multi-layered. Each layer of the onion they peeled back revealed a much wider operation spanning to over 500 companies worldwide, specifically in the energy sector. They used what's referred to as spear phishing to gain access to over 3,000 users and spread malicious code throughout. This attack was happening from 2014 until at least 2017 and spanned over multiple websites across the globe, laying dormant, just infecting as many people in the energy sector as they could. The goal appeared to be the same as the previous phase, gain access and the ability to disrupt the United States critical infrastructure any way possible. To quote the FBI here, in this case and so many others, victim companies that provide an easier entry point can provide criminals a way into higher level, more critical targets. Cybersecurity is quite simply at the heart of our national security. And that interestingly brings us to number one on the list. And this one is worrying, but very similar. Evgeny Viktorovich Gladkik, another Russian born citizen and an employee of a research facility within the Russian Ministry of Defense. He infiltrated and compromised critical safety equipment within an energy facility in another country, and as part of the same conspiracy, attempted to do the same in the United States. Evgeny used malware referred to as Triton to gain control of systems that maintain the safe operation of a natural gas refinery. The malware was designed in such a way that it could disable the safety controls on physical equipment without alerting those who were monitoring it. The malware caused the systems to briefly shut down on two separate occasions and had the potential to cause an explosion on the refinery or releasing of toxic gases by affecting the plant's sulfur recovery efforts and burner management mechanisms. After he and his accomplices had this level of control with a foreign plant, they attempted the exact same intrusion over United States plants that operated in a similar fashion. They were luckily 
unsuccessful. I'll let the FBI explain the severity of this persistent threat. Quote, We've seen ransomware attacks and other malware that can shut down a facility, the agent said. The potential impact here is more dangerous. This could actually allow an actor to trick a plant's operators into thinking that the plant is functioning normally, while the actor leverages access to a plant system for destructive effect, with consequences for human life and safety at both the plant and the areas it serves. So that is exactly what it would take to be placed on the FBI's top 10 most wanted cyber fugitives list. Subscribe, leave a comment, press the like button, check my Patreon out, and I will hopefully see you next time.